Welcome to the Making Waves at Sea Level podcast with your host, Tom Singer. In each episode, we will explore the interesting stories of business executives, entrepreneurs, and industry leaders who are shaking things up and growing their companies. It is time to make some waves. Now here's your host, Tom Singer. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Making Waves at Sea Level. My name is Tom Singer, and I have had the pleasure to host this show for now 600 episodes. Well, actually, it's 599. Our next episode will be the 600th episode. I originally started this show six years ago. At that time, it was titled Cool Things Entrepreneurs Do. And in that time, I have interviewed about 550 business leaders. That's CEOs, entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, and people who are just leaders in any way within the world that they work. And it has been an amazing learning experience. I originally started the show so that I would have access to really smart people. I decided I would treat it sort of as my own personal university to learn ideas, uh, skills, thoughts, and concepts. And along the way, be able to share that with everybody else who listens to the show. So now we've sort of changed it up. I am looking for more C-level executives. So if you work for a company and you have a CEO, a CFO, a CIO, or, or anyone in leadership who you think would be a great guest for this show, please let me know that they're out there. So today's show, I want to talk, it's just going to be me, by the way. I want to talk about business networking in this era of COVID. You know, if you pay any attention to my blog or any of the places that I have had the pleasure to write for or speak during the last six months, I have been talking about how important it is that everyone focuses on social tightening while we're in this world of social distancing. Yeah, I believe that we need to socially distance. The pandemic, it's dangerous, and we want to protect everyone's health first and foremost. However, when we are not engaged with other people, That's where bad things happen, because I have always taught everybody that all opportunities in life come from people. And so we can't just go home, turn on Zoom, and hide in a room with the shades drawn, thinking that we're going to be able to continue growing a robust career. And if we have a company that has uh, has to improve its sales, we can't just email our way to success. We have to be engaged with people. That's why I came up with this term, social tightening, while social distancing. So here's the thing. Your social skills, that that ability to engage with other human beings, it's like muscles. If we don't work them out, they're going to atrophy. And so I have been working with a lot of companies, talking to their teams, doing programs where we're discussing who's doing a better job at keeping in touch with clients, prospects, vendors, referral sources, other people in your industry. Who's doing a better job? Your team or your competitor's team. Now, most people don't really know what their competitors are doing, especially during this time where we don't get to see them at networking events and conferences. So you really don't know, most likely, what your competitor is up to. But here's the thing. I want you to remember this. Your competitor's prospects, those are your clients. And what if they're doing a better job of building and maintaining and fostering real human connection during this time, and you're not doing as good of a job, who's going to benefit? Who's going to win that business 18 months from now when this pandemic is over? Do you really want to wait until it's over only then to discover that your relationships have atrophied, they've withered away and died? I don't think that that's what you want. I certainly know it's not what your boss wants. And I will tell you right now that we need to all be paying attention to How are we networking, for lack of a better term? How are we building and maintaining business relationships in this era of COVID? So let's face it, the last six months, it's been like a crazy six years. The downturn that's happening in our economy in many sectors is unprecedented. Now, what I've noticed is I talk to a lot of people who have jobs with companies who haven't really been effective. Yeah, they've had to to go work from home, but they haven't been impacted in a way like, say, my business has. So if you know who I am, I've made my living for the past 11 and a half years speaking live at events. This is both internally for companies, speaking at sales meetings and other types of team events, 
and speaking at industry events. I do a lot of work in trade associations who put on industry conferences, and I'm usually the opening keynote speaker, or oftentimes I um, I will serve as the master of ceremonies in for that event. But here's the thing. Live events all stopped. I call March 9th the day my business died. Because if you think about it, it was about March the 9th when live event after live event started to postpone and cancel and put off to 2021. Now, many organizations are saying we're not going to gather until 2022. So I watched everything disappear. And yeah, I've been fortunate enough that I've been able to do some online events, but there's not as much of that type of work as you might think. So I've had to retool everything that I've done. I actually took a job working for an executive search company doing uh, business development, and I actually love it. It's a fantastic company. It's a perfect role for who I am. And the opportunity came about because of my network. And so that's what I want to talk about on this episode. That's what I want to talk to you about today is why it is so important that you are keeping those relationships alive. Because if the next six months, heck, the next 12 months are like the last six months, those relationships with people are going to be your lifeline. Let's face it, in any situation, good times and bad times, people like to do business with people who they know, they like, and they trust. Now, I realize some of you are going to say, wait a minute, that's an old saying. Tom, that's a cliche. Yeah, it sure is. But cliches are always based in truth. And it is true that all things being equal, people will want to do business with people they know, like, and trust. Think about it in your own life. Do you really want to do business with people who you think is a jerk? Now, you may choose that person because they have a better price or they have a better product. But if everything's the same, I promise you, you're rarely going to go to the person who you don't trust or you just don't like. So we need to be paying attention to this and really working on how are we tightening those relationships and how are we getting new relationships off the ground during this time. And it's not easy. You need to have Attention, meaning you have to pay attention to what you're doing, and you have to have intention. You have to know your purpose every single time that you engage with people. Now, in the presentations that I do when I go into a company, I often talk about three buckets that are so important for success. It's your plans, your passion, and the people you surround yourself with. Now, let me just touch on the first two really quick, right? Your plans, that that, that goes back to pretty much basic, you know, goal setting and having a business plan. If you don't know, if you don't know what success looks like, you'll never get there because you'll constantly be chasing one thing after another. Now, while I'm not a believer that you can't ever like defer from those goals, if you don't have some sort of a target that you're working towards, it's really easy to get stuck and spin your wheels. Goal setting is a really important part of business success. Now, some people roll their eyes at the idea of goal setting, but that's because it's been taught to them in the wrong way. The way I talk about goal setting is knowing what it is that you want, because when you know what you want, it makes the rest of your day so much easier when you have to make those, those tough, you have to answer those tough questions. All you have to do is ask yourself, does this action bring me closer to the goal or take me farther away from the goal? So your plan is really important. The second bucket, it's passion. If you don't like what you do, if you're not into it, if you don't have some sort of a passion, you're never going to do the work that it takes to be super successful. Yeah, you can put in the go through the motions and put in the basic work and do fine. But I don't think you're listening to this podcast or watching the video version of that because you just want to be fine. I think you want more than that. So you have to have a real joy for what you do. But then that third bucket, that third bucket is what we're talking about today, and that is people. Your business network matters. I don't care who you are or what you do for a living. The people you're connected with are the ones who are going to bring you amazing opportunities. And in a world where we've been asked to physically distance, you have to take effort to make sure that you're finding ways to get close to people. You have to make it personal. Right now, there's a whole bunch of information being sent out to us. It's being pushed like crazy. In fact, I informally did a little survey and I looked back at my email. I'm getting almost 100% more inbound emails, most of them newsletters and other types of promotions, now in September than I did back in March. That means that most companies are relying and pushing. They're relying and broadcasting out to people rather than making it personal. 
it's these emails that I'm getting aren't one person emailing me directly. These are things where I'm blind CC'd. Yeah, it starts off, Dear Tom, but I am quite aware that they did a mail merge to put my name into that email. No longer do we fall for that. We don't think that's personal. We know that a broadcast email is exactly that, a broadcast email. So I'm telling everybody that during this time, this crazy time, we have to look for ways to be more personal. People will notice when you're personal. When they feel that you care, that's when they're going to remember you in the future. And if they feel that your competitor cares more and has made it more personal, they're going to try their product and service the next time they have that opportunity. So one of the things you want to do is make sure that you're taking a step back from constantly being in sales mode and be in human mode. Focus in on human connections. I often will call myself sort of the human connection catalyst because I believe that that's what we need more of. We need more human connection. We live in a world where people before COVID were already feeling lonely. Surveys showed that around 20% of Americans and 25% of Canadians claimed that they, that, that they felt lonely some of the time or all of the time. There was a book that came out in April of this year by the former Surgeon General of the United States, Dr. Vivek Murthy. He was Surgeon General under Barack Obama, and I think he was the 19th Surgeon General, if I'm not mistaken. He wrote a book called Together, and it was an expansion of an article he wrote two years ago for the Harvard Business Review about this epidemic of loneliness that exists in our society. So if 20% of people were already feeling lonely before they were asked to work from home, before they were asked to close their door, put down the blinds, and stare into a camera on Zoom for eight to 10 hours a day. How do you think they're feeling now? I think people are feeling more disconnected. They're feeling isolated. They're lonely. And if you can be the person who reaches across that void and lets them know that, that you see them, you know they're there, and you're sharing this experience with them, they're gonna remember that and it's going to come back to reward you far, far down the line, long after this pandemic is over. So how do we do this? How do we do business networking in a world of COVID? Well, I've got just five tips for you, and I'm going to go through these somewhat quickly. You might say, well, Tom, these are sort of simple tips. They're, they're very elementary. Yeah, they're simple. And yeah, they're not super advanced. But I can promise you that a lot of people aren't doing them right now. So the people who will do them are going to be the ones who stand out. And I want that. I want that to be you. So the first tip is be the per person who reaches out. Make it a daily thing that you're going to reach out individually, not by a broadcast email, to several people. Now, it depends on your personality. It depends on your network. It depends on a lot of things, how many people that's going to be. But you could reach out easily to one person every day. I recommend three people that you reach out to and just let them know, I was thinking of you today. How are things going? You can admit, hey, this is a weird time that we're living in. I'm just checking in. I do this to at least three people every day and most people don't respond. I'll be honest, I get no response. Several people will write back saying, thank you, I appreciate that. But a lot of people will say, can we jump on a phone call? Boy, thank you for your consistency because some of these people now I've reached out to a couple of times over six months. You don't want to reach out to the same person every week. But over time, if you reach out and say, hey, I was thinking of you today, you crossed my mind. All of a sudden, if they're feeling invisible, you're going to make them feel that much better. And because very few people are actually doing this type of one-to-one -one outreach, that's going to be the differentiator that shows that you're a human and not some sort of a bot. Because let's face it, there's more to a business relationship or gosh, any type of relationship than a like, a link, a share, and a follow. Now, I'm a fan of social media. I think it's great. I use social media. I use Twitter. I use Instagram. I use Facebook. I use LinkedIn and many others. But here's the thing. A like, a link, a share, and a follow is not a relationship. A relationship is something that happens individually between two people. So you have to be the one who reaches out and lets them know you want to cultivate that connection. And the second tip is while you're reaching out, Offer to help or, and find a way to provide some value. So that outreach could, it could include a link to a webinar. It could include a link to an article. 
Uh, it also could just be an offer to listen because you know that maybe they are going through a rough time. It could be an offer to brainstorm. Maybe be the person who says, hey, I'm going to put together a group of five or six people in our industry. You know, no agenda, just a chance for all of us to talk. If you reach out and offer to help and provide value, again, you're going to be the one who stands out over your competition and over most people who are out there. Now, the third tip, use the social media tools. Like I said, I'm all about human connection, and most of the time throughout my career, I've taught people about the importance of that face-to-face connection. But right now, many things are closed, and to be honest with you, we're not sure how safe it is to meet face-to-face, and there's a lot of people out there who aren't comfortable with it. Some people are okay grabbing a cup of coffee at an outdoor cafe. Other people just don't feel it's safe yet. And many people have different circumstances at home. Maybe they have an elderly parent or someone else with a compromised immune system, so they can't go out. Therefore, use the technology tools that exist. So think about this for a minute. What if COVID had hit in 1990 and we all had to work from home and there was quarantine? It would be really hard to communicate with anybody. But now we have these tools. Now, a lot of these tools are the broadcast that I'm talking about, but I'm not saying there's no place for that. I'm saying remember that it's more than just broadcast. Use your social media tools. Post things on LinkedIn. Again, providing value is the smartest thing you can do. But when you see someone else has posted something and it's smart or it catches your eye, use those like buttons. But more importantly, leave a comment. I can tell you as someone who uses LinkedIn a lot, Lots of people see my posts. I know because I track the analytics. Very few, A lot of people then might like what I have to say, but very few leave a comment. But those who do, often I'll comment back. Sometimes we'll have a conversation right there in the comments. And more often than not, it leads to me thinking about them and them thinking about me. So use that comment section. And on occasion, when they say something really good, share it. When somebody puts something out there and you hit that share button, It tells tells that person, I thought what you said mattered and I wanted the people in my network to see it. Dive in and figure out how to use these tools. And it's more than being passive. You have to be a little bit proactive in order to get the value out of them. So my fourth tip, be creative. Find ways to let people know that you're out there. Send them something interesting. Maybe uh, buy a weird shaped cookie cutter that has something to do with your industry and and bake bake sugar cookies and frost them and then mail one to each of your contacts. Now, I know for a lot of you, you'd say, wow, that's weird. But if you got a sugar cookie that was homemade and cooked by somebody in the industry and it had something fun to do with your industry, would you take a moment and look at it? Even if you don't eat sugar and wheat, you might not eat the cookie, but you'll notice that they did it and include a handwritten note that lets that person know what it what went in to that gift. When you're creative, <coughs> you stand out. And the fifth tip, be transparent. I am sick of people in my industry and everybody's industry who's saying, wow, look at how great I'm doing. I'll tell you what, a lot of the people who are putting out the, the how great they're doing emails or posts on social media, a lot of them aren't doing real well. They're just trying to practice fake it till you make it. I think we're all tired of people who are faking it out there. So be transparent. If you're struggling, either in business or maybe emotionally because of the pandemic, let people know. Now, you don't want to be Eeyore. You don't want to be, oh, is me. The sky is falling. But when you let people know that, hey, this has been a hard time, but I'm scrappy. I'm going to find my way through it. They can relate to that because almost everybody, almost everybody is having some sort of a rough time with that. So I've been really honest. My business evaporated in March. And I'll tell you what, I wasn't rich, so I can't live forever without income. But what has happened is, is a lot of people have reached out and said, hey, I understand that. There's people who've reached out and said, hey, my companies have a meeting. I know you've gone through some rough times. Let me refer you to be the speaker for this virtual meeting that we're going to do. So when you're transparent, people want to help. But more importantly, when you're transparent, they see themselves in your honesty people who are posting pictures of what great trips they're doing or everything else, it's not relating with the average person. So just be honest, be authentic, be transparent. This isn't the time to brag. And then my bonus tip, that was five. I'll give you a sixth one. This is what has saved my bacon. This is what has really helped me find the little bit of success that I have found through this whole COVID time. 
and that is starting back in March when we were quarantined and asked to social distance, I realized that my business was going to go through some really rough times. I thought for about four to six months. Now I think for about two years. So what I did is I started reaching out to people and I made it my policy that every day I was going to have a one-on-one conversation with someone I considered really smart. Well, now I have had dozens and dozens of phone calls and Zoom calls with really smart people. And I'll tell you what, I ask every single one of them, what ideas do you have for me? I'm really transparent. I tell them what's going on. I tell them about the creative things that I've tried so far. And then I ask for their advice. Now, I'll be really honest. Not every single person who I've asked has had a great idea, but a couple of people have. So talk to really smart people, ask for advice, and listen. And if they give you a nugget that works for you, then take action on it. Now, this pandemic, I think it's going to be around for a little while longer. But I know one thing's for sure. We're going to get to the other side. We're all going to get through this. But when we get to the other side and our society opens up and business returns to some modicum of what we used to know, and and I think it's going to be different. I think these virtual tools are here to stay. But I also know that human relationships aren't going to be replaced by Zoom calls or emails. We're going to get back to relating to people. We're going to get back to going to conferences, to having sales calls face-to-face, to having lunch with a client. And when we do, the people who have been able to maintain and build new business networking relationships, those are going to be the people who find amazing levels of success. When the economy opens up, the people who are well-connected and who made an effort to help others through this wacky time, they're going to be the ones who are rewarded with the new business. You don't want to wait until 18 months from now to find out that your business network has totally atrophied and it's gone away and your competitor has shown up as the leader in your sector. Don't wait. Start doing things now to socially tighten. Find ways to build connections with people. Is it as good as face-to-face? No, probably not. But there are so many ways that you can do this. I think it is super important. Business networking in the time of COVID, it's going to be hard. And it's going to take creativity. It's going to take effort. And not everything you do is going to work. And for those of you who are really good at that face-to-face networking in the past, this is entirely new muscles. It's going to, you're going to be sore for a while as you learn to do this. And I know a lot of people have Zoom fatigue. They're tired of watching videos or being on Zoom calls. But it's all we got right now. So that's my advice on this. As I prepare for my 600th episode of Making Waves at Sea Level, I just want to leave you with this. What have you done today to make sure that your business network, your connections with people, those human connections, what have you done today to make sure that they're stronger? If you haven't emailed anybody and introduced yourself or reintroduced yourself, start with me. Just send me an email. It's Tom, T-H-O-M at TomSinger.com. Put in the subject line, introduction via podcast or something like that, and introduce yourself to me. I'll make you a promise. If you do that, I'll write you back. I'll respond to that email. And maybe if there's some connection between us, maybe that will warrant us having a phone call or a Zoom call. Maybe we'll then later connect and have that like, that link, that share and a follow on LinkedIn or some other social media. Maybe we'll have a few more conversations and maybe... Maybe we'll end up doing business together later. Maybe I can be a referral source for you or vice versa. Or maybe, heck, we'll just become friends. I think your business network is so important. If you've listened all the way through this episode, I want to be part of it. So go ahead. That's Tom, T-H-O-M at TomSinger.com. Let me know you listen to the podcast. And let's see where our business connection goes. Thank you so much if you're a regular listener of this podcast. I've I've really enjoyed doing the show for now almost six years and 600 episodes. Please, if you like the show, go tell some friends. Uh, Leave a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcast love. And then finally, go out and tell somebody else because that's how this show has grown. Most people I talk to tell me they found this podcast. They found it because someone in their network told them this podcast, well, it just sucked less than other podcasts they listened to. So that's how we do it. Go tell a friend. Tell your business network about it. That helps me. Maybe it helps you. I hope our paths cross really soon. And the last thing I want to say is super thanks to my sponsor. I have the best sponsor for this podcast in the whole world. That's Podfly Productions. If you want to start a podcast, and I know that a lot of you do, jump over to podfly.net slash cool things 
and check out the offer that they have for the listeners of this show. All right, we're going to be back in a couple days and we've got some really good interviews coming. Plus, you want to check out episode number 600. In the meantime, go out there and have a great day. Thank you for listening to the Making Waves at Sea Level podcast. Without your listening to these in-depth conversations, there would be no show. Connect with Tom at TomSinger.com and follow him on Twitter and Instagram at TomSinger. <laughs>